relationship that, that we have. And in this case, they are linked through shared risk genes. So if a, a, this gene in the middle is a risk gene in three diseases, so it somehow links those three diseases. And if you take all diseases and all risk genes, you end up with this network. And what you see is that within this network, the diseases uh, cluster together. And they cluster together when they have a lot of shared risk genes. That's like glue between the diseases. And you will see that a lot of these clusters are multicolored. Which means diseases that we treat by different doctors in different clinics genetically and mechanistically belong together. They are not different diseases. So what we have to turn? We have to turn this around. What we now call diseases are just the symptoms. And from the genes, for instance, that have linked those symptoms, we can then actually derive to the causes of disease and actually the disease. So we would have completely different disease definitions. Plus, Alpha-1 chymotrypsin deficiency. That's a, for a patient very difficult to even pronounce. They call themselves alphas. But it's a precise disease definition. We know the cause. And the, the T, 2D representation is an approximation. So in the end, it's a, it's a three-dimensional network. You can dive in. That's what Jörg is working on. You can dive in and, and look at your favorite symptom, which genes are around, if you look at a gene of interest, you look which symptoms are basically around. Uh, in the end, it's big data. So uh, in medicine, we, we like to visualize things. Biophoneticians say it's completely pointless. You know, the data don't change whether you visualize them or not. But you know, as a medical doctor, I just like things visually. Um, so we work on this cluster of diseases there, which in the first place is a strange mix. You know, it has asthma, it has heart failure, it has hypertension, Alzheimer, stroke, obesity. In the first thing you think, ooh, it's a strange mix of diseases. But they are genetically linked. So they probably are in for some patients the same disease. And of course you can cluster diseases also differently, for instance, by comorbidity. If two patients and uh, if two diseases very often occur in the same patient, then maybe the same disease. That's why they occur so often in the same patient. Or if two diseases have the same symptoms, then maybe the same disease. That's why they share so many symptoms. So you can make different disease networks and we use this to validate that this is really a cluster of diseases, not only by genes but also by comorbidity and by uh, shared symptoms. We're not the only ones in this uh, sort of clinical uh, approach. There's a group from Christina Kiel who works on some uh, retinopathies uh, which clinically is one disease, but she showed mechanistically it's three completely different uh, diseases. And down here is a set of uh, immune diseases which uh, Eddinghaus uh, or Frank and Kiel uh, uh, worked on. And they say disease terms like rheumatoid arthritis, colitis ulcerosa, so psoriasis, asthma, these are all disease terms we ideally don't use anymore. They are misleading. So they, they, they describe symptoms and one colitis or patients with colitis or psoriasis symptoms and psoriasis symptoms may have one mechanism. He or she may have nothing to do with other psoriasis or other colitis or psoriasis patients. They have other mechanisms and other comorbidities. Yeah. And we constantly lump patients together uh, into trial and error therapy. And here a nice paper by Sanchez Vega who worked on all uh, cancers and uh, they, they claim they can define all cancers 
uh, by 10 pathways. The problem is there's another paradigm shift. We don't believe in pathways anymore. Uh, I'll show you some data. So that's the only shortcoming. They, they stopped a little bit too early in their cancer plans. So if we look at our cluster, these are the genes that, or some of the genes that we found there, some were related to cyclic gene basically, uh, and some were related to uh, reactive oxygen species, let's put it there. So if we would have done what most geneticists and most bioinformaticians do, they associate those genes now to cake pathways. So pathways like you find them in textbook. And this would be then the two cake pathways, roughly 400 proteins. What do you do with it? You want to treat 400 targets? It doesn't help. Cake pathways are man-made mind maps. That's what cake actually says. You know, 